Welcome to this lesson on ratios. Please be sure you have these notes in front of you so we can begin our lesson. And I apologize in advance if it seems like I'm out of breath, but it's because I am. I just got finished dancing at the Renaissance Rally. There are two I can statements for today's lesson. The first one says I can explain the concept of a ratio. And the second one says I can describe the relationship between two quantities using ratio language. So let's start off by talking about the vocabulary. The first vocabulary word is called ratio. Ratios show how two or more quantities are related. So that just means to compare two different things. Ratios also describe a pattern. Whenever you see the words for every, that usually indicates that you're talking about a ratio, which means you're comparing two different things. Sometimes we might say, for every three dogs, there are five cats. You are comparing two different things, or two quantities. In that case, you are comparing dogs and cats. You could also say, for every two chocolate bars, there are five gummy bears. Once again, you're comparing two different items, two different quantities. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the key concepts on the right-hand side of our notes. You can write ratios three different ways. So I'm going to use the little image of the calculators and the protractors to write ratios. I'm going to compare two different things, two different quantities. Calculators are one quantity, protractors are one quantity. So I know that I have two calculators and five protractors. Once again, I'm comparing two different things. I can also say, for every two calculators, there are five protractors. Or you can say, for every five protractors, there are two calculators. So you can write the ratios from calculators to protractors like this. Two calculators over five protractors. Or you can write two calculators colon five protractors. Or the third way, you can write it two calculators to five protractors. So that's three different ways to write a ratio. You can write it in, as a fraction, you can write it with a colon, and you can write it with the word two. So we're going to extend our key concepts to this slide. We've got two different types of ratios. The first type of ratio on the left hand side is called a part to part. The other type of ratio is called a part to total. Let's go ahead and discuss a part to part ratio first. Because so for a part to part ratio, both quantities are part of a bigger total. So an example of that would be a pancake recipe. In the pancake recipe, it says two eggs for every three cups of flour. Those two ingredients are part of the recipe. You've got eggs as part of the recipe, and you've got flour as part of the, re the recipe. I can write a ratio for the ingredients of a pancake recipe because I'm comparing two quantities. Eggs are one quantity, and flour is another quantity. And also, I see the word for every here. So I know that that's a ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a tape diagram for this situation. And to create a tape diagram, let's talk about the two different items that we're comparing. Eggs is the first item, and flour will be the second item. So what I want to do is, for a tape diagram to work, I'm going to draw a box. And this box should represent how many eggs we have. Now if you look at the original recipe, we should have two eggs, so I'm going to draw two boxes. For the flour, I want to make sure that my each box is the same exact size. So for flour, I need three cups of flour. So there's one cup of flour here, here's the second cup of flour, and notice that the boxes are trying to be equal. Here's a third cup of flour. So this is a tape diagram for a part-to-part -part ratio. You've got two separate boxes, one on top, one on bottom. So let's go ahead and discuss what a part-to-total ratio looks like now. For a part-to-total ratio, 
one quantity is part of the total, while the other quantity is the total. For example, it says, Grandma knits two pink sweaters for every five sweaters. Well, the pink sweaters can be sweaters. So the pink sweaters are part of the five sweaters. So this is a part to total ratio, part to total ratio, because the pink sweaters are part of the total amount of sweaters. So this is what the tape diagram looks like for a part to total ratio. I'm still going to draw boxes, but instead of having a top and a bottom box, I'm going to draw one box that has a total amount. Now the total amount of boxes that I should have is 5, because 5 is the total amount of sweaters that I have. So here's one box, two boxes, three boxes, four and five. And try to make sure that each box is equally spaced. Now what I want to do is I want to color two of them. So here's one. And here's the second one. And the reason why I colored two is because these two represent the pink sweaters. So let's use these key concepts to solve the following examples. So for example one, they're asking us to write a ratio in simplest form that compares the number of red paper clips, here's the red paper clips, to the number of blue paper clips. Here are the blue paper clips. So I know you probably have a black and white worksheet right in front of you. So go ahead and like shade or color in the two red paper clips so you know the difference. And once you go ahead and do that, take note of which one comes first. According to the problem, they're giving us red first. So I'm going to place red on the top of my ratio. And then if you notice, blue comes second. So I'm going to place the blue on the bottom of my ratio. Now if I write this and I count, I have two red paper clips over one, two, three, four, five, six, six blue paper clips. Okay? And before I even start doing this, I want to identify this as a part to part ratio. Because the red paper clips are part of a total. The blue paper clips are also part of the total. The other way you might want to think of this is the red paper clips cannot be the blue paper clips. So this is one way to write the ratio, 2 over 6. But we can write it two other ways. I can write it using a colon, 2 colon 6. That's the second way. And I, I can write it as 2, 2, 6. That's the third way. Now remember, we're dealing with fractions, so we want to make sure that our fractions are always reduced. So 2 6, I can reduce that. You can divide the top and bottom by 2. So the answer would be 1 third. So 1 third is the reduced ratio. Or you can write 1 colon 3. That's the reduced ratio. Or you can write 1 2 3, which is the other reduced ratio. So please make sure you always reduce your ratios. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a tape diagram. We know that this is a part-to-part -part ratio because we already identified that. So our part-to-part -part ratio is going to have red on the top. And I have, looking at my reduced ratio now, it says that I have one red box. So that's what I'm going to draw. And then our second ratio is blue. And I have three of them. So here's one, trying to keep them all the same, here's the second one, and here's the third one. So that would be a tape diagram for this part-to-part -part ratio. So we've got one more thing to talk about. At the end of the problem it says, then explain its meaning. Well this is what you can say. There is one red paper clip for every three blue paper clips. And that's describing the relationship between the two quantities. So pause the video and complete the problem, and then we can go over the correct answers in class tomorrow. 
All right, so for example two, it says several students name their favorite flavor of gum. Write a ratio that compares the number of students who chose fruit to the total number of students. So for this problem, I'm going to call this a part to total ratio because the fruit flavored gum is part of the total amount of gum. So if we want to figure out the total, let's go ahead and add the peppermint gum plus the cinnamon gum plus the fruit gum plus the spearmint gum. And when you add them all together, you get 21. So I'm going to write my part to total ratio like this. Fruit flavored gum on the top over the total amount of gum. Now by looking at my table, I have 3 students who like fruit flavored gum. Out of a total of 21 students who took the survey. I could write this ratio two other ways. That's the fraction form. The second form I can use 3 colon 21 and 3 2 21. But please remember we need to reduce our ratios. So if I divide the top and bottom of my ratio by 3, 3 divided by 3 becomes 1 and 21 divided by 3 becomes 7. So my reduced ratio should be 1 over 7 or 1 colon 7 or 1 2 7. So let's now draw a tape diagram for this. The tape diagram is going to have a total of 7 boxes because that's the total amount. So here's one box, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And please try to make sure that your tape diagrams are equal. Mine doesn't look very equal because it's very hard to use this pen. But I'm still going to have a growth mindset and try to persevere. Alright, so that's the total amount of gum that we have. I'm going to shade one of them because that one is the fruit flavored gum. And I'm going to label that as the fruit flavored gum. So now let's describe the relationship between the two quantities by saying one out of every seven students preferred fruit flavored gum. So pause the video and complete the problem and we can go over the correct answers in class tomorrow. So let's take a look at, at example three. It says you mix different amounts of paint to create new colors. Write a statement that describes the relationship between the amount of paint in each diagram. All right, so we're going to use blue paint and mix it with green paint. So this is known as a part-to-part -part ratio because the blue paint cannot be the green paint. And when you mix blue and green together, you get a teal color or you get another type of color. So the blue is part of the teal and the green is part of the teal. So this is a part-to-part -part ratio. So in order for me to write my ratio, I'm going to write blue on top and green on the bottom. So if we sit there and we count our parts of blue, we've got six parts blue for three parts green. That's one way to write the ratio. Or you can write it as six colon three. Or you can write it as six two three. So in my, my statement, I can say there are six parts blue for every three parts green. But notice that this ratio is not reduced and I can reduce six over three. You can reduce it by three. So six divided by three, my numer so my new nu numerator will be two and three divided by three is one. So my new ratio will be two over one or two colon one or two two one. So if I say my statement again with my reduced form, I can say there are two parts blue for every one part green. The tape diagram for this situation will look like this. The blue will have two boxes that are blue and the green will have one box 
that's green. So this is the tape diagram of the reduced form. So pause the video and complete the got it problem and we will go over the correct answers in class tomorrow. So now that you had some time to w watch this video, we want to know how you feel so go ahead and self rate yourself. If there's any part of this video that you do not understand, please go back and watch it again. Also come to class with some questions so that we can discuss it in further detail.